You know, in the early days when I started, you know, I, my degrees in music, I started recording. I have to spend all this money to go into a studio and all this stuff. And so the first thing that technology did was kind of made it possible for someone with very little technical skills to be their own engineer, to, to, to have the basic skills. It did level the playing field a little bit there and, and allow access. And I think in film, you've seen the same thing. I read in your bio that you had some experience with a wardrobe malfunction in 19, uh, no, 2002, yeah. 2004. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's that all about? Well, that was the, Tell me about the incident. The, yeah, I think everyone, uh, well, a lot of people know the, <laughs> the famous uh, Janet Jackson Super Bowl incident. What was fascinating to me about the whole show is the amount of preparation, and that's where that show actually learned a lot about just um, building contingency plans right. and, and not leaving things to chance. And I, I think we sat in like a four hour meeting just building contingencies for every possible scenario for, uh, you know, power to fail for all this stuff. And no one really <laughs> built any contingency for anything like that. And I think that was, you know, kind of the funny part is that no matter what you did to prepare, you know, no one really thought about, well, what if, you know, what if our talent, and I truly, to this day, believe it wasn't anything planned by the network. It was something planned between the, artists. the, the two sure. artists. That, yeah. Um, and someone may, you know, disagree with that, but uh, I don't think anyone had built in that contingency. Like, what, what if we lose control of our artists, you know? You're a creative, but you're also a technologist. You built a database that allows to leverage talent. Can you tell me more about that? Because, and the, specifically the reason why I'm intrigued by it is, creatives typically aren't very good at the technical part of the world. Mm -hmm. um, you obviously saw a sweet spot there. Um, you're leveraging, you're allowing technology to leverage some of your creativity itself. Mm -hmm. I'd just love to know more about it. Um, yeah, well the, the database, you know, which uh, actually we call Debacle, which is, I think, aptly named, uh, which is really database organizing celebrity logistics, but uh, it's also debacle. is uh, relates to just the debacle of putting on yeah. live television events. Any event in general becomes a debacle at some point uh, in, in from the production end. It just always feels like uh, at some point everything's falling apart. Um, <laughs> and so it, it really just is a way to, to put all the information in one place and allow everyone to access it. And, and for me, it was... Um, mainly about watching all these individual teams of people, very smart, very creative, hardworking people just um, slaving away at something that they didn't need to be slaving away at. Everyone duplicating each other's data, everyone you know, messing up all the data because they're all just tired and, and working off of their individual things. So I really wanted to create like a shared platform where everyone could come in. Um, <laughs> everyone adds a little bit piece of the puzzle and then that creates the, the, the final um, whole and for me the interest uh, was partly just uh, honestly just to save my own time so I, I my interest is in writing and in, in directing and in, in kind of creating things and yet I had to make money and I so I had to take these jobs as in production and so I realized well if I could automate half of what I did yeah. so what would normally be a 10 hour day of work maybe I could do in five hours because I automate it and now I have five more hours to work on my own stuff What are the opportunities that you think are there, especially if I was having a discussion with, say, a, somebody that represents a brand? What would be your advice as to where they could go creatively as opposed to the tried and true methods today? The brands that do it well, I believe, um, are the ones that, that find artists, digital artists, uh, uh, performance artists, whatever it may be, music artists, and, and truly invest in them in a long-term kind of uh, process, which means they've got to give them uh, room to experiment. They've got to give them uh, some flexibility, and that's very hard for a brand to do. It's very hard for from an advertising sure. perspective. But first, they want to see immediate return on their investment. Sure. And second is they've got it's a huge level of trust. I find the artists are, are the best at figuring out how to integrate something honestly. Oh, I um, see. And I find that when it comes from the top down, from an advertising, it just feels forced. Mm. I mean, even. Sometimes when I'm on my Facebook and I and I just just see this ad come in, that's just so obviously not a post of my friend, you know. And I have another friend who's on Instagram all the time, and I, it's so obvious to me that she's being paid. I think the brands that that can do it more successfully will be the ones that really can work with an artist long term and can allow the artist to figure out um, how to incorporate that into their work in an honest way.